power of a vi visual and the strength of a word. How do communications today bring change? Hello, everyone, and my name is Lucy Zoria, and I'm the program manager here at America House Kiev. It's my pleasure to welcome you back to our ongoing series, Creative Resilience in a Time of War. Today's discussion is about visual communications for change. Our panelists tonight will share practical experience and insights on how to present compelling messaging in visual communications and enact change for creative work in different ways. Tonight with us, we have two panelists, two very experienced and very driven Ukrainians. I will introduce our first panelist, Anna Karnauch. She is the editor-in-chief of Telegraph Magazine and the head of Projector Publishing. It's so great to have you here with us tonight. Thank you. Anna, additionally to being an author and an editor, since June she has also been the head of Projector Publishing, a publishing project of the online creative and tech institute Projector. And apart from that, during the initial months of the full-scale invasion of Russia against Ukraine, Anna made the decision to remain in her hometown of Kiev to be present and active. And together with her team, they launched an incredible project, an art book titled Telegraph, Creativity of the Brave. This is one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to Anna and the team behind Telegraph, because it really has become a wonderful project that showcases Ukraine's grit, resilience, and creativity in the face of all challenges. Our second panelist is Alexandra Krochevska Tsakos. She is a graphic and digital designer, art director, lecturer, and influencer from Rivna, Ukraine. Alexandra, it's nice to have you here today with us also. My pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alexandra has 12 years of experience in design and she has nine awards. Awards of Ukrainian Creative Design Week, AC, ADC UA, and TDC Certificate of Typographic Excellence. Additionally to collaborating with huge organizations like UNICEF, USAID, UNDP, and others, she also works as a lecturer in educational projects, among them Projector Creative and Tech Online Institute, as well as the Media and Communications and Journalism School of the Ukrainian Catholic University. So ladies, together you worked on the Telegraph uh, publishing project, is that correct? Yeah, we did. Uh, I was really thrilled to uh, ask uh, Sasha to join as an author and she did a great job. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> Thank you for invitation because, uh, you know, uh, I am uh, a bit long uh, writing uh, author of the art. I do know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's always a pleasure to create some materials for uh, Telegraph and you have the whole hour to understand why it's such a beautiful journal. So, yes, I even have the journal in my hands today and I hope to share um, share a little bit of it. Okay, we all have it. I mean, it's really, it's just a beautiful piece of art, but it's also a very, a very powerful, yeah. 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 It's a powerful medium to tell the story. And we're really excited to have both of you here. Um, and uh, before we get started, I'll share a few words with our audience about how today's event will go. Um, Anna and Alexandra will give us a short, a short presentation about how this incredible project came to be and how they work today to showcase Ukraine's creativity within Ukraine, but also abroad. Um, and after that, we will have a conversation answering your questions from the audience. So please feel free to send them in to today, uh, commenting below the streams wherever you're watching this. So Hanna uh, and Alexandra, um, I'm happy to pass the floor to you and please tell us all about Telegraph. Uh, okay, I'll start. Um, hello everyone, I'm really delighted to be here and especially to be here with Sasha, our great designer and great author, regular author of the Telegraph. And um, let me tell more about how uh, we created this magazine and especially uh, this uh, issue, Creativity of the Brave. Um, next slide. Yes. Uh, Telegraph is a printed magazine. It is published by um, Projector and uh, it's dedicated to Ukrainian visual culture. Uh, lately, Projector has launched, as uh, Lucy already mentioned, a project, uh, publishing uh, project. And we are willing to create not only Telegraph, but other um, visual uh, magazines. 
books and our uh, and other uh, literature around culture and society. But let me tell more about uh, the beginning of our journey. It uh, ever since started in 2021 when we uh, released our first uh, volume of the Telegraph printed magazine. Uh, it was uh, dedicated to Ukrainian design. Um, uh, it was a beautiful tribute to our uh, beautiful design society that we love. And um, it was kind of um, an experiment more because we didn't plan it to be regular. It was just uh, one great project uh, that we were excited about. We collected very great designers, illustrators, and other creators to be our authors in, in this uh, magazine. And it uh, ended up very uh, beautiful inside and outside. Um, uh, so um, we decided to continue with this project because we realized that uh, Telegraph, uh, as a printed magazine, uh, gives us opportunity to touch a lot of um, themes, a lot of directions of Ukrainian visual culture. And quite uh, quickly, we uh, picked another theme of our next issue after Ukrainian design, but just in the middle of um, our development of this issue, uh, Russian uh, full-scale invasion, started so we were forced to drop uh, to drop it it and um, uh, to be honest at first i um, i had quite optimistic expectations about uh, ending of this war i thought it would take some weeks tops month uh, but unfortunately it didn't happen so um, my team and uh, and i we decided that we have to review our plans because uh, our lives uh, has changed forever and or all our development before wasn't my ma uh, matter anymore. So uh, we just took a very obvious but hard step. Uh, we uh, decided um, to stop our development on our previous uh, planned issue and start development on the new issue. And this issue became creativity of the brave. We just looked around and we understood that we have so much more uh, to talk about this war. We have a great uh, unique experience. You, every Ukrainian has unique experience uh, in the world um, relieving this war. And um, especially if we are talking about creatives, we can use their point of view to show it um, more precise and more understandable sometimes. So, um, um, yeah, so we decided to start, uh, start working. And we, uh, after six months of that, uh, from April 2022 uh, till September 2022, we did this magazine. And at that time, I saw that we were moving, moving very slow. I wanted it to be as faster as we can do because I was nervous that our material, our stories are uh, becoming not so fresh. But now, uh, it was like a year ago when we released it, I see that every story and every visual uh, work that we uh, selected to this volume, it's still uh, accurate and relevant. So I'm really grateful for the team that I have and for every person that helped us uh, because it's uh, very huge and great work. Um, yes, uh, we released our, uh, oh yeah, here is Nastya. <laughs> she is our designer. Uh, she is holding two uh, magazines in her hands. Um, She's doing it uh, during our offline uh, presentation of the uh, creativity of the brave. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to do this event because it took um, 
a place at uh, September last year, and it was not uh, things were hectic in Kyiv, but we uh, were lucky to uh, do it without air raid alarms. Uh, but one went off just after that we finished our main uh, program, uh, and. Um, um our uh, telegraph became i'm sorry uh, next slide our telegraph became um something of a bestseller <laughs> uh, we didn't expect that because we thought that uh, we were doing something for creative community at first but then we sold like twenty thousand of the items it's quite a good achievement for Ukrainian market and we gathered so much warm feedback from uh, people outside of creative community that we realized that all the Ukrainians share the same or very similar experience and that our work speaks to all of them. And it was another great thought in our heads and uh, uh, that warms our hearts. Um, also, uh, we're proud to say that um, the design of the Telegraph, uh, Creativity of the Brave, got, got shortlisted at DNAD Awards. Our design team was delighted. Also, we were great. Um, um, oh, we uh, the Guardian wrote, wrote about us. and <laughs> It was a very uh, nice achievement for our writing team. And our magazine uh, made it way, it made its way to our president Zelensky, and we uh, know for sure that he paid uh, his own money for this uh, magazine that he bought. And uh, one more interesting fact that uh, uh, one of the items of uh, creativity of the brave uh, was delivered to White House uh, in the Washington DC. So it's also a very nice uh, thing to know and to be proud of. Uh, but of course, all this success uh, is hindered because uh, everything that we have with this publication, every, public, uh, every publication is dreaming about this success, but uh, we understand that um, we would give it all up just uh, to uh, to make this reason of this existence to go away and to to gain our uh, safe uh, safe existence back. Uh, from the beginning of the uh, work uh, on this project, uh, creativity of the brave, we were dreaming about to make it in English. And uh, um, when we gathered our courage and started translation and editing, uh, we um, uh, we were under uh, our infrastructure, Ukrainian infrastructure, uh, was under attack. Uh, of uh, we will just uh, in the on the really thin uh, brink of. Um, the clouds. The clouds, yes. And uh, um, we understood that uh, uh, our uh, plans are delayed because uh, the printing house is uh, uh, print house doesn't work very reliably because they have only four hours of electricity and uh, everything just uh, went slower. I'm not the person who likes uh, things slow, so uh, it was very uh, nervous uh, time for me. But uh, eventually, we made it, uh, and uh, uh, in the spring of 2023, we had printed magazines in English in our hands, and it is a great, great uh, uh, one of the little victories we already have and cherish. Um, uh, here I want you to show the edge of our book. Uh, it uh, says Slava, uh, Heroem Slava, Slava Ukraini, uh, depending on the angle you're um, holding your pages. Sasha can show it to you uh, right now, uh, but she has Ukrainian version of the uh, magazine. Yeah, it's Ukrainian Kyrillic letters. Uh, it's one of the uh, gems of our design. Oh, yes, yeah, Sasha is being... Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, the next slide, uh, it's uh, Glib, our creative director, he is holding uh, the magazine in English after printing. And uh, I want to uh, say that uh, the main uh, inspiration and the main reason why we uh, started working on this uh, project uh, was uh, the great amount of great visual works that we were surrender, uh, surrounded because um, we just felt uh, obliged to collect uh, those works in one beautiful place uh, so people can have it, uh, store it and ideally show it to next generation and to uh, tell more about their experience and what they have been through. Um, I was constantly in awe oh, how fast our um, illustrators and designers are moving in uh, uh, visual reflection they, that, that they produce because sometimes uh, first thing I uh, saw was uh, the picture based on some news before that I heard that news. So uh, it was like a great... Um, great movement uh, in uh, design society and it was very uh, spirit building for us. Uh, here is the uh, picture of Zhenya uh, Velichev. It is taped a uh, window, uh, one of the main symbols of this war for civilians uh, because uh, uh, most of people they tape their windows to make them more safely uh, to make them more safe for them. Um, so here I would like to show you more visual works uh, collected in our magazine. They are sometimes seemed to be too rough or too angry. Um, but I think Sasha will explain <laughs> you why. And uh, by the way, this... Uh, uh, plane. Uh, uh, this work with a plane with Maria uh, was made by Sasha. She is the author of this illustration. And uh, yeah, I uh, I believe that creativity uh, was one of our weapons in this um, war and still uh, continue to be. And I think it's a very sharp tool against Russia, Russian propaganda. It's a very nice mean to uh, share our uh, thankfulness, our gratitude to uh, our foreign friends for the support. Uh, and for me personally, most important that it is very, um, a very powerful encouragement for Ukrainians who live here and who uh, unite uh, with these works because we uh, all understand that this is our life and um, this is uh, our fight together. So I think that I uh, can uh, pass the floor to Sasha. Thank you for listening to me and about Telegraph. I hope you liked it and yeah. It's a big pleasure to hear you every time when you're talking about Telegraph because you are so passionate about everything that was going on and uh, you are still in move with the next edition but i'm not not the person who were right to talk about this we are talking about the second edition that's probably it's the most um historical uh, edition for me because i was taking part as an author of the article about ukrainian war posters during the whole 20th century 20th century and it was not as simple as it was and also i remember that time of blackout and how it was difficult to gather everything uh, all the materials because they are like everything in ukrainian design history they are um, laying everywhere but not in the one place and you need to be really uh, smart and you need to take all the time to gather it all around but I want to talk about um, things that uh, we have in creative world and uh, I want to explain a bit more how we communicate as a creatives uh, in the visual way about the world and probably it's um, I can 
uh, take some advices in that because also I was taking part as a, not only as an author of the Telegraph, but also as a designer, graphic designer who creates some cre uh, creative things, uh, visuals for making this work, uh, 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 to vocalize everything this work, or what I th suppose that it's uh, important to vocalize. And I am trying to make uh, the messages about Ukrainians vocal. And what I can say that probably the most difficult thing in this world, in, uh, in this war for us, uh, for Ukrainians, is to understand the difference between Ukrainian auditory who uh, has something inside and some uh, inner thoughts about what is going on and uh, everything abroad and something that is that lays behind the borders of Ukraine. It's uh, something uh, really another in understanding of some messages that are vocal in Ukrainian creative field or in news field or etc etc and probably the first thing that we need to understand uh, how to communicate about war that uh, we don't know exactly what foreigners know about us. And also I had this experience when I visited Atipai. It's the uh, biggest conference about uh, uh, types, uh, about fonts um, in the world because it's a conference of association of typography uh, society, typographical society. And we had this meeting in Paris in the May of this year. And uh, it was really interesting to talk with all the people from all over the world. And uh, sometimes the answers on uh, the question, what foreigners know about us and about our, our war also, uh, it really depends on the country, on everything that we, that they hear, hear about us. And sometimes you need to explain obvious things. And also it's a recipe how to make your a creative uh, visual uh, successful. You need to explain sometimes and you need to explain a lot of things. Also, you need to understand how clearly a uh, person discerns what war is in general, because sometimes people are so afar of the questions of war. So not everybody outside the context of the war knows what it means. And also you need to use a bit of stories to explain something that we are going through, because um, when you are seeing some uh, visuals that are using this theme, uh, for example, parents who are writing their phone numbers on the backs of their children, um, on the back of the children's backs, uh, before leaving the house, because you are, leave, you are living uh, near the uh, places that, that are close to war and you are afraid for your children, so you need to have something written on their backs to, make, to be sure that they will return home or if something happened, because you need to leave the occupation or something like that, you need to be sure that these facts about a family of this kid will be present, will present, will be the, with this uh, kid because you can lose your paper, you can lose everything that you can put into the uh, children's clothes or something like that. And it's really difficult to explain some things for foreigners because uh, the experience of the second world war or the first world war it's like something afar and we are going through this now so you need to expose evilness sometimes how evil is uh, present in our lives and how you need to be strong to um to, to stay against and also you know a lot of people are struggling with a night long night area experience so you are uh, waking up tired because you have only two hours of sleep or sometimes you have almost unsleepy night and uh, you need to explain this to some people because it's your reality but it's not the um, something that uh, other people are experiencing because you are fighting you are you are um, um, you are in fear and you are um, in completely logical fear of death because you can you can be heated by missile, you know, and uh, also sometimes it's like something uh, difficult because we have some uh, some um, uh, 
uh, some uh, words like we are rising for birds and what it means we are rising for birds we are collecting some funds for uh, for buying drones for our uh, guys in a full and for sometimes for some people abroad it's like something new some yeah, some new word combination so it's uh, interesting to talk about and sometimes uh, foreigners need to be in this context and you need to tell about experience so it's the three uh, simple steps how to communicate about war because all the war that is vocal sometimes is difficult to understand for somebody who is abroad and um the next slide, if we can, Anna, thank you very much. Uh, well, we have some approaches to visualization, how we can talk about uh, some things in our uh, nowadays through the visual things. And the first thing is visual metaphor. For example, we can use a combination of symbols to create something important and to uh, highlight the news, how highlight the something that we are uh, really afraid of, uh, that we are um, in some mood or we are talking about some facts that are uh, happened with us uh, on the uh, on the territory of Ukraine. Um, it's not even a matter when, where is it on the Ukraine, like in the Kiev or in the uh, occupied Donetsk. Also, you need to be honest or get just get out because it's really in the digitalization era, it's really feels when uh, you are uh, reading something that are completely created by the propaganda uh, goals or something. And probably the most interesting fact about this war that Ukrainians are trying to be as native as um, it could be. Like I'm using these words from the writing and uh, storytelling um, stuff. And also you need to support your creators because a lot of them are creating their uh, visuals during the war, during the blackout, during the lack of money, because uh, of course some projects are closed or uh, they are postponed because of the war and uh, it's really difficult to keep everything together and to maintain your work progress and sometimes you need to support just via like or via comments or via money or via something like that and also I remember how it was hard to get to Paris uh, with the, some, you know, financial uh, lack of fin fin finances and I collect all the money just in the last minute. And it was also a common problem here in Ukraine because you need to go out uh, of the country and uh, you need to uh, just not to use a plane like it was before uh, from the Kiev and to go to the city that you are needed and you need to go to Warsaw. And it's like much more money than you are, uh, that, you, that you already know how to travel because you have shortest di di distance between the, the point that you need to go and the point that, from which you are uh, traveling to. And you need to maintain the best you, that you can. And also um, it's the most difficult thing to understand that you have a lack of time, lack of electricity, lack of ideas sometimes. You are in trouble because of uh, your relatives uh, that are on this war. They are troopers or they are in the AFU or they are volunteering sometimes near the uh, battlefield or something. And uh, it's really hard to, to put everything together and to move on with the ideas. Also, the most common thing in the visual uh, topics of uh, uh, pictures or another project is uh, actualization of news and sometimes some news from the Ukraine should be more vocal and visuals help them to grow uh, in uh, every point of the planet in every corner of our lens also and you need to keep the dialogue between Ukrainians and the whole world and the most interesting thing is going on the crossword of these things when you are uh, knowing about something that is an inner, di inner dialogue uh, between the Ukrainians and they are trying to, vocal it, uh, to vocalize it uh, to the road auditory and it's really difficult to sometimes it's difficult to talk about it about this but it's need it's really needed 
Also, we are trying, when you are analyze uh, these th things, you probably notice that everything is about to make the world better. It's like a very common message during the war because we are not trying to uh, just stay against, but we are trying to move, to move in this temple, in this highest temple. And we are trying to uh, order the world in the best way that we can, and it's like really similar to similar to the message of Shevchenko, uh, It's like about uh, cherry garden that you are need to uh, that you, that is needed to be cherished, and you need to maintain this. And also, without this uh, kind of things, without making something better, without making some beauty, make, make some in the temple of productivity, probably the mental state will worsen dramatically, will worsen dramatically um, among, among us. And it's a really high needed stuff. Uh, the next slide, please. And uh, probably we need to talk about uh, some visuals that we had. It's about, it's ex there are examples of some visual metaphors or uh, the next things uh, you can just uh, click until the yeah yeah and that's it yeah we have a lot of examples how it works and also uh, the practical implementation of these ideas is transparency if you're working in the volunteering project which contains some visual materials you need to create it transparent uh, to make it transparent not to use this uh, propaganda tactics to make something with a um, second bottom, you know, or with a, um, like something biased or something like that. Also, it's like challenging to have uh, everything done in the lack of time in the um, extended uh, in the regime of extended time for uh, making everything done because of lack of electricity or other things because you need to have your work done because everything of this um is made uh, in the uh, not in the work time because you have your own work and you need to 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 have your money you have to have your salary but everything the everything all this uh, all these materials is made in the time behind the work so it's like the second work it's like the second part of the activities that ukrainians are doing now also you need to understand that all these visuals that we have in ukrainian uh, practice of visual language of war they also contain a lot of war uh, a lot of love and support and during the war probably the most common stereotype about this it's like the everything in the visual materials uh, everything among the visual materials of war could be about war but it's not true and you can and, uh, just open it how how creative ukrainians are because they are talking about such difficult things with a lot of love and passion and also you need to it's like the 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 easiest way to understand this uh, behavioral communications among the ukrainians that um a lot of them are trying to support, even if it's not as obvious as it seems from the first point. And also, the, this will to leave Ukrainian voila or uh, free to will, like uh, you are wish to uh, wish to will or intention, uh, how we can translate it into the English. So it's knowing that you are standing for. Uh, it's um, what it means, voila. If you are knowing what you are standing for, you know what you are standing for, and you can say it by words, and also you can do it by your actions, and also it's something that's sacredly written in your heart. It's like engraved. And uh, therefore, Ukrainians know the answer to the question, what will happen the next, and what will be the next future trend, and why it's it, why it is why it, it's, it's so interesting to be with Ukrainians in this story when they are in the war, when we are in the war, because uh, even because of our values, uh, which are like a na national idea. It's uh, something that uh, can um, go, th that helps us to go through this and gives us stamina because we have a lot of instruments how to deal with information. And as I said, in digitalization era, it's like a very serious challenge. And if you 
notice a lot of success that Ukrainians had during the last years. Probably you know these two products. Uh, and I'm talking about DIA, which is like an electrical, uh, electronic tr uh, passport ID card uh, for everyone who is living in Ukraine and who downloads this up. And you can use it like your driver's, driver's license or your ID card. Also, you can even uh, receive money from the government because you have this DIA and you have a governmental card in the bank of which called monobank and also monobank is a really interesting experience of using the bank app because you can do all the transactions and you can even play in game uh, in do in the interface of monobank app and you can also have a lot of interesting experience within this because you can uh, achieve uh, um, some achieve uh, you, you have uh, you can have some achievements because you are using this app with a lot of uh, interesting ways. Like you can uh, toggle it uh, or you can shake it with your friends and you don't need to um, ask about number of cards. You can just put uh, money on uh, the friend's card because you are shaking the uh, telephone. And you probably you can read about this uh, experience, but Monobank is really common bank uh, to have the card somewhere in the Ukraine and probably it's the most uh, successful projects uh, in Ukraine now because also they are completely okay with the saving and developing infrastructure infrastructure for keeping information safe and also a lot of ukrainians know that uh, information is a weapon and creativity that which use information because you are making some decisions that are based on your evidence also ukrainians know about that and uh, ukrainian um the next slide please uh ukrainians are really uh, uh ukrainians are really uh, strong because also we have the biggest market of freelancers in Europe and we are still uh, having this uh, big place and a lot of people who are working with uh, as a freelancers know about the digitalization as a field of information needs of information which is spread to some uh, corners of the world or something like that and uh, probably the most interesting thing about the visuals of the world is how to critically understand all that go that, that is going on and it's like a way of answering of the a lot uh, on the lot uh, on the uh, on the uh, majority of Russian messages about us, because we understand that probably world doesn't know a lot of facts about Ukrainians, and we need to say something about ourselves, and also we need to answer sometimes um, in forward quicker than Russians do that because they spread a lot of lie about us. And you need to be really attentive about it because we understand the, um, how world is moving on. On the example that if you are not talking about yourself, somebody will talk, will, will talk about you, will talk something, will um, say something about you and it's not uh, going to be true at the 100% 100, 100 um, cases. And um, therefore, today uh, we experience uh, and we shed the light on informational imperialism, uh, which we should be aware of. And uh, we even return to dark ages be because um, it's really um, scary to live in the world uh, which contains such an interesting cases of lie about a, a big biggest community like a country uh, we and this lie you, you need to be really critical about to understand and to um uh, to 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 look on this and understand that it's true or it's lie and also we need to go through the renaissance again and that's uh, what we are talking about here in Ukraine, that we need to um, use all the experience that we have in the information spreading, in understanding of information, in working with information, that uh, we need to use our superpower to revive, to uh, make everything done and to uh, have the, uh, and to be a guide 
on the way of uh, of fighting with information imperialism, which is common in the world. And also because Ukraine uh, offers new ways to store and protect information and we even sell it to other countries as experience as a product, um, probably we can't we can uh, be sure that we are not stuck in propaganda because we understand how it could uh, work in the different ways. And that's the reason why you probably not even open the world of propaganda at all. We have some messages that are common with, and uh, that are a feel, filled with a wish to win and with a wish to support or something like that. And it's uh, okay in the time of war. But probably a lot of Ukrainians who create their visuals naturally to support something, it's not the story that this propaganda was forced by the government. And and also, it's like the very interesting experience if we compare some uh, experience of visual that were created during the World War the First and the Second World War. And it's like something really interesting to talk about. And in my article in Telegraph Design, I opened this uh, question a bit and have this uh, materials written. Also, uh, when you know, you know, and uh, why you need to... Uh, why you need to um, listen Ukrainians, why you need to, uh, to be with Ukrainians, uh, because uh, you need to, and you can uh, just, uh, we can share this experience for you, and you need, you can be just with us in this experience and to achieve something for yourself. Also, it's really interesting that information is a weapon, and uh, because, you know, a lot of people who were captured by Russians, uh, and uh, they go, uh, they went through this experience twice or even three times because we had this war from the 2014 year. And uh, they even read, uh, they wrote books about it. And for example, a book of Igor Mikhailishin, which called Fuga uh, 199 in Totality of Capture, even talk about the uh, examples that uh, one of the Ukrainian soldiers was tortured. Uh, just because of uh, Ukrainian flag on his uh, social page, uh, because um, it was like uh, something really connected uh, with uh, his position in the world. And the next slide, please. Well, you need to follow Ukrainians because we have a lot of things that uh, war communications is not only about the war, but also it's like about the free will to live even more. And the next slide you can uh, show that we have a lot of exper experience in doing design, even, it's not, even if it's not connected with the war. And it's like much more cases if we can comp compare it to the war even visuals and we are trying to live our lives as best as we can and even to talk about heritage about uh, moving on with uh, some new technologies or some new topics or no, new team themes and also it's not directly connected with ukrainian resistance but it's a uh, probably the best sign of Ukrainian resistance at all. And Ukrainian design in the time of uh, war is trying to live even harder, even more passionate, it's not more passionate and also it's pulsing with a uh, live to life. And of course we won't stop and Ukrainians create, Ukrainian creatives resist. So that's it. Thank you, Sasha, for yeah. such an interesting. Beautiful. <laughs> it was such a pleasure to listen to both of you. And I love this message. We won't stop Ukrainian creatives resist. It is so powerful. And I think it's really encompassed in the work that you've done for Telegraph magazine. Um, I've spent some time with, with, with the art book and just reading the stories. And it struck me how much of curation went on because as you mentioned at the very end, Alexander, there's so much uh, impressive Ukrainian design and Ukrainian stories and ways of approaching creative work um, that that it was it was a goal to showcase it. Um, just choosing choosing the illustrations, choosing the stories, choosing the creatives to highlight 
through that work, there was quite a lot of curation going on. And we actually have a question that is related to that from, uh, from one of our viewers. Um, and they ask regarding the cover and the symbolism of the anti-tech hedgehog, because that was also a very specific choice. So they're curious to know, were there any other cover options and why did you choose that one? Um, and also, uh, is, is it just the anti-tech ha hedgehog or does it somehow reflect on the on the practice that, that some Ukrainians ad adopted and is actually seen all over the world in conflict zones of taping windows so they don't shatter. So can you speak a little bit as to the cover? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for these great questions. I like to answer it. Uh, the choice of the cover was completely on our creative uh, director, Glipka Kaporikov. I trust him completely on uh, all our design um, uh, everything that uh, can concerns design, and uh, really interesting that you mentioned this anti-tank uh, thing. I can't pronounce <laughs> it in English. I'm sorry, uh, but actually, it uh, mainly it is a window which mm -hmm. is uh, taped, and we open that window, and we uh, go to the story. So this is main um, symbol, but this uh, anti-tank he hedgehog, yeah, mm -hmm. I managed it. Uh, it's uh, another layer uh, that uh, even readers can uh, open for themselves just uh, to be immersed in the experience. And I think it's also very interesting symbol to, uh, to find in our cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a symbol, um, I would say, uh, a symbol that a lot of Ukrainian creatives have interpreted. For example, our viewer, they said that they saw a work by Ukrainian artists in Copenhagen where they mm -hmm. taped the windows of the Royal Playhouse. So this is being really used the, the, the world over. But yeah, as you mentioned, there are so many layers mm -hmm. there. Um, it's, it's beautiful that everyone can see a little bit of different. And I love the concept of the open window and you invite people to view these beautiful works and to see these stories. Also looking, sorry, you want to add something? No, 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 just press it. Also looking through the book, I mean, additionally to having, um, you know, just so many beautiful documents and just, it, it's really a record of a moment in time and just an abundance of overflowing creative work. But I think that this is a very important document for anyone who is actually curious about how Ukrainian creatives work. It was so fascinating to listen to you, Sasha, about how you, you were so articulate about the rules that you have and the, the general approaches that you've seen. And I assume you use in your own work and that you've seen from others, um, from other creatives as well. And here there is a you know, there's this fascinating like guidelines on how to create um, how to create works that would speak against propaganda, share the truth, and just some insights. And I, I'm just wondering, how did you know who to talk to and who to approach with with, with these guidelines and these ideas? To be honest, it's a really difficult question uh, because you need to be like one with one feet. You need to stand really uh, hard on the Ukrainian ground and you need to be really curious about what is happening uh, all over the world. And probably the success uh, of this recipe is that I'm trying to be in the global concept. And also I had a community of people who are really interested of what is going on in the world. And probably it's the success recipe. And also um, probably my day is started from the Asian news later American news uh, and later Ukrainian news. And I'm trying to be in this field, not only the Ukrainian news at all, but also in the world uh, news uh, at all. And also if you are trying to understand what is going on in the global global trend, it's uh, also a recipe how to create the messages that will resonate with somebody all over the world. And it's really important to be not 
on just you know uh, selfish about oh we are in the war we are so you know uh, poor people just give us money and to help us with everything no it's not works like that and you need to be uh, really uh, warm-hearted about all the people in the world and not only be just concentrated on the war dealing with the war in your uh, your case at all so it's like my my thoughts about it and probably what uh what anya is thinking about it's also very interesting i think uh i just um remembered how uh, about this international news that we're um, following also uh, when uh, the earthquake in the Turkey happened, how much compassion Ukrainians showed. And it was like, uh, I was really proud of our people that uh, we are not uh, focused only on our problems or the fires in Hawaii, all our, our um, Ukrainian newspapers uh, covering it also. And it is um, quite a good sign that we are really uh, fighting the ill and uh, the good is on our side and inside of us. Superpower of gay threat Ukrainians. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. And yeah, it's just... Um, the, this outpouring and this these creative cooperations that we've seen. Do you feel that through this project, you've become closer uh, maybe to other people within the creative community or brought it together in some way? Yeah, of course. When you uh, read the first draft of the personal story of Dima Bulanov, who uh, lived with his family in occupation and how he shares everything that happened with them, you just cry over it. And you, <laughs> I'm forever fan of the Dima Bulanov and everything that he's done. And I'm really like to see him recovering. And I um, that other people in Ukraine who suffered uh, these uh, horrible sins in their lives, they will recover too. So uh, every personal story, every uh, visual work that we've encountered to collect in our uh, magazine, uh, it has imprinted in us. So uh, we were, I I'm feeling 100% closer than I ever was with uh, creative uh, uh, creatives and not only creatives, but with every civilian, especially civilian in, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a really interesting case when you are not even close to some people who were the authors of the articles, but after the article, you have this wish, you have this desire to ask, how are you? Like a common question here in Ukraine, mm -hmm. So I read your article and I read what you are going through and you, I read what you are went through. And I'm really grateful for your article and that you have this, you have this uh, efforts to make this done. And uh, it was uh, it was the way to start a communication between some authors if uh, they are not working uh, on the material uh, closely to each other. And it was uh, my my it was my story also. That's just so beautiful. And I love that you showed um, some some just feedback that you've gotten from Ukrainian readers. And it's also just been very strong, even for people who, who don't necessarily do creative work, but can appreciate it and feel it in many ways. But I'm curious, so you've started promoting the project all over the world. And I'm curious as to some of the responses that you might have gotten from people who are not Ukrainians and who are outside of the context if those have happened yet. Mm, yes, we actually reached a few uh, influencers, I can uh, uh, name them. Uh, it was Frank Wilde, the uh, German stylist, and he was just uh, um, happy to receive our gift. And um, we really appreciate all this support that we, get, uh, we have gotten from him. Um, also, we uh, have very nice responses when we contacted some distributors uh, all over uh, Europe or in Britain or in US. Uh, not every contact uh, finishes in our co commercial uh, cooperation, but uh, uh, every person that uh, have seen our um, presentation or uh, our magazine uh, uh, is uh, excited to uh, 
be closer to this work and it's a really uh, very nice feeling to have that you understand that this work is uh, really um, precious i think absolutely what are um so so the magazine right now the second edition um you did a reprint so it's available now if people are interested in reading it and finding it it's on your website correct Yes, uh, we have in stock our English version, mm -hmm. uh, but our Ukrainian version is in printing and it will be available in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, but English uh, Creativity of the Brave uh, is available to, uh, to buy, yeah. So tell me, what's next for Projector Publishing? Will, the, will there be a third vo volume? Is the story ongoing? What's going on? <laughs> yes, it's uh, we're decided to um, to create another issue. If we are talking in creativity of the brave about our fight for victory and for freedom and from pe for peace, uh, our next uh, issue will be dedicated to our superpower that will uh, help us to uh, gain this uh, victory. And Sasha already mentioned it. I can actually, uh, I have a few more slides <laughs> to show uh, a preview of our uh, next issue. That's really exciting. Uh, yes, we just, uh, on this week, we sent it to print. So it also will be available in a month, I think, because we have some complicated print. Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, issue is uh, called Vola, this uh, great word that uh, Sasha already used. Uh, what's unique about this word uh, that it has uh, simultaneously two meanings, like uh, the will, the inner ability to change your reality, and the freedom. Like Everyone wants to have freedom in his life in every different aspect. So uh, this voila uh, word can be uh, used as, like we all know about Hugo in, uh, in Denmark or Lagam in Sweden, but uh, this voila can be this unique world uh, word that will uh, show uh, the world around our superpower and our unique way of life which is not so calm as uh, Swedish or Danish way of living, but uh, nevertheless, it's also uh, very um, interesting uh, uh, way of life, which we def uh, defend here in Ukraine during this war, uh, this war that we are living in. So yeah, this world, word Volia perfectly explains what does it mean to be Ukrainian. And we hope that our uh, next issue uh, uh, will tell more about it and to show how beautiful Vola uh, is, literally beautiful. <laughs> this is so exciting. And as far as I understand, I mean, this entire project from design to print is completely made in Ukraine, right? Yes, of course. Uh, this is our uh, goal to... Uh, share our Ukrainian soul <laughs> at first for Ukrainians and then uh, to export it abroad and to share it with the world. So yeah, we um, interact with Ukrainian authors, Ukrainian designers, and we print it uh, all in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Sasha and Anya, as we just wrap up and head to the end of, of, of today's program and this really wonderful, inspiring discussion, I have, I have a couple of like one question to ask you because this entire series, it's been about creative resilience under extraordinary circumstance. And I can see that you are so passionate about your work and that you see true value in it, you know, in terms of community, in terms of reaching out, spreading the word, but it can also be extremely difficult. So I'm wondering if you have any tips for anyone out there that does creative work, but that might be struggling. Like, how do you keep that fire burning, be creative, but also retain the vola to continue on? Sasha, would you start? Yeah, probably yes, because uh, the my story of, as an author 
is that you shouldn't give up at all because when you are even trying to um my articles i need to just to to mention it my articles is really difficult to read because i use a lot of uh, facts a lot of histories about a, a lot of stories uh, about some ukrainian creatives or designers because my uh, specialty field is ukrainian history of ukrainian design it's it's a t very hard topic to talk about because we have a lack of data in this field and it's really difficult to find everything and to make it like a story connected to one fact one fact with each other and uh, it's really difficult to make the material uh, at the whole piece and the probably the common uh, reason for me to to be passionate uh, about all this when you are um, figure it out fig figure out that a lot of data a lot of pictures are still captured by Russians in Russian museums, or they are just uh, as post-colonial heritage what the myth, and you need to struggle with, you are struggling with it, and you, are need, you need to fight with this Soviet myth about Ukraine. And uh, in this time, you need to take your efforts, take your time, and don't give up because these obstacles is really hard. It's a really high wave. You need to uh, it, you need to fight with it. But if you do everything right, you will surf. And it's the best way to deal with waves, you know. And probably it's the experience that we can share also that you can be, uh, you can resist. And also you can be resilient and you can uh, revive in all the circumstances despite of all the obstacles and in all circumstances. So that's the recipe from me. Thanks so much for sharing. Anna, what about you? I think that except of um, don't giving up, it's to be grateful. And I think this is the main uh, idea I would like to share because uh, when you get up, uh, you can feel tired because it's hot and you just had three air, air alarms uh, in a row this last night. We had it actually. But you, uh, uh, you're grateful. You're grateful that you are uh, still alive, that you have the job, that you have the job that you love, that you in your job can... Uh, cooperate with such beautiful people that they surround you. You're grateful to Army of Ukraine that uh, uh, they sacrificed everything that uh, so you can uh, live this life happily ever after. So uh, to be grateful is a, gr a great recipe to be happy even if uh, the war is going on. Thank you so much. That's all of these things are very important to keep in mind and they're so inspiring. As we wrap up, I wanted to ask you if there's anything else you'd like to share with our audience, if there's any call to action or any idea you want them to keep in mind as they continue with their day um, or evening, wherever they are in the world. I want to say thank you for all the support and I would like to ask you to keep supporting Ukraine and uh, to keep uh, standing with us, with us. Yeah, and if you don't know ev everything, anything about Ukraine, you should uh, <laughs> to Google it, like a bit of facts, and you will uh, be inspired of what you will uh, see there. Uh, even if you don't know about Shedrick of, or if you don't know about Ukrainian design, just come on and buy some telegraph design because it's uh, something really precious about uh, to have uh, uh, about Ukrainian design and Ukrainians at all and be inspiring and also it's a time of really really big fight but also it's uh, something uh, it's a time to find something inspiring uh, especially for you not even for Ukrainians but for the every person in the world you need to know what you are standing for and you need to be sure in this and you need to make it vocal and we are trying to do this as ukrainians and in and we use it uh, use a lot of creative ways to make it and you can watch by us uh, you can watch us and you can be with us follow ukrainians and support creatives all the people a fool um buy some medicine or something you know what to do we talked we talked about it like a million times but support us. It's really important to support democracy and all that stuff. 
you know. <laughs> Alexandra, Anna, thank you so much, first of all, for joining us today and sharing your experience, sharing your wisdom, giving us some insight into your process, into this really important project. And, and actually more than that, thank you for the very important work that you do in creating these beautiful works that share Ukraine stories, that strengthen the creative communities in Ukraine and outside of it, but also for the very important work that you do as part of Projector, the Institute. And Alexander, for you researching and uncovering these pages of Ukrainian history and Ukrainian design creativity that have just been, you know, covered by years of, of colonization and just propaganda. And now we now we get the chance to really show the world who and what Ukrainians are because the world is finally watching and finally learning to understand us and wanting to come to know us. So I would like to echo Sasha as well, come to and, and learn a little bit about Ukraine and we would love to learn also about you instead. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. This was such an incredible conversation. I love talking to you, and I'm sure that our viewers love listening to you. I encourage everyone out there to uh, get hop on the Telegraph website, learn a little bit more about the project, and share it uh, with uh, with your friends and family abroad as well. Do it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, ladies. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who joined us today. Um, sending our best from Kiev. Uh, this was Sasha, Lucy, and Anna. And we'll see all of you next time for the next uh, series, the next session of the Creative Resilience in Wartime series. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Thank you.